Hey. Hello, welcome everybody. I'm Lou Bloomfield, and this is the fall version of How Things Work, Physics 1050. Um, there are lots of places I could start, and I'm going to start the way I always have, and then I'll, I'll talk more about this semester. The, the, where I'll start is, is, so what is physics? And really, it's, it's the examination of, of, of the physical world, of, of the, sort of the mechanical nature of, of our universe. And it explains and it allows you to predict a lot of the behaviors of just the stuff around you. And that's, that's its value to me and I hope eventually to you. Um, it addresses a lot of how and why questions. So questions like what, where, when, there are often other fields. But physics is all about the, you know, why is the sky blue? Why, how, how does a lawnmower cut grass, which we'll come to? Um, those questions. And so, so that's really what this course is built around how and why questions in, in a large part. It's a key component of science literacy. So you, 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 many of you have already taken physics, uh, say, in high school or elsewhere, and other sciences. And we'll, you know, we'll see. <laughs> it's a long story. But where I hope you'll find uh, th this course fitting is really helping you understand science in a way that makes it a form of literacy, that you can look at the world around you and actually sort of say, well, I, you know, I, I know why that's happening there. I'm, I'm not sure that many of you have, some of you, I hope, have gathered that already, bits and pieces of that, or a lot of it. Uh, many of you will, will find that you haven't. It's, physics is woven through, through modern life. Uh, since maybe the 1850s or the Industrial Revolution, all that. It's just, the world is filled with things that depend on physics ultimately at some, at some level, uh, more so in the past 50 years. All these gadgets you deal with, they're all, they all came out of a, a, under, a better understanding of, of physics. And physics is going to be involved in addressing a lot of major issues that you all are going to have to deal with. Uh, the, the classic example is climate change, which is just coming down Roaring, roaring into view, uh, it'll be your generation, uh, much more so than mine, that will be dealing with this. And the issues are all, they're, they're heavily physics dependent. OK, so that's, that's the story of physics a little bit. Uh, the story of, of this class, you know, why how things work. And how things work is it, it's physics in the context of objects. And which is an aside, then I, I created this course a millennium ago, uh, back in the 90s, uh, with the idea that, that people were taking physics courses. There were physics courses offered here, there, and everywhere. There still are. But people come out really not having a good connection in, in their minds between the physics that they hopefully or maybe learned in the, in the class and the real world. Like, so I decided to pull it into the real world from the get-go. So this is a, I, I think of this as a backwards course in physics. The traditional course in physics looks at a physics context, uh, concept, beats it, you know, beats it formulaically to death, and maybe if there's time at the, at the end of the class or the end of the semester or somewhere, they apply it to the real world. And so you get people showing up who have taken physics and have, you know, they can't put it into any context, and then there, there are lots of physicists who know these, these stories of like, well, do you want me to answer it the way it happens in the real world or the way you taught it in class? because uh, they had made no connection. Anyhow, so, so I turned fi the physics course around. Instead of doing con concepts and then, and then eventually applying them, my, my intention is to do applications and then find the context, concepts in them. That's actually how physics was discovered in the first place. Nobody went and just sort of decided that once per week we're going to come up with a concept and then maybe we'll apply it. They were trying to explain real stuff. Like, you know, and why does the apple fall out of the tree? Is it the same here on Earth, the falling apple as the, as the moon? Does that, the, this is Newton's great insights. Like, oh, you know, these might be related. The moon's motion and the apple's motion when they're falling. Hmm, some connection. So, so he discovered physics in the context of, of a real world problem. And that's what we're, we're going to try to do. That's, that, that's the gimmick here in this class. Um, it's really the case study method. So case studies used you know, business school and a lot of other uh, fields, here I've brought it to physics. And, and as we'll see later on, the, the first case study in, in, in 
in principle at least, is, is skating. But you'll see it's, it's, we can do lots of cases that are the same. They have the same story underlying them in, in terms of physics. What else in this? Um, yeah, it's, the other thing about this class, another aspect of, of how things work is it's, it's not a magic class. It is a physics class. And so you may well have gone to science events or even classes, and they, they, they end up going a bit like this, like, well, here I have, ooh, look at that, ooh. Yeah, I, and I make sound effects and all that stuff. You can get used to that. Um, ooh, that's science, right? Or, or, ah. I used to have a nice, beautiful purple one, and it broke. Ooh, same idea, right? Or, you know, get that guy a life, right? Um, do, uh, situations where, they, where you're shown stuff like this, and there are, there are way more exciting ones than, you know, I, I can blow stuff up all day. Um, <laughs> we will a little bit. Yeah, we'll do more than a little bit. Every opportunity. But, um, <laughs> but if that's where it goes to, you know, ooh, this is science, it's, it's a total failure because it's a magic show. And the difference between magic and what I will try to do is a magician tries to keep all the secrets. You know, you try to, try to fool you. Uh, they didn't really cut the person in half. Of course not. Um, but they don't tell you how, you know, how they pulled this thing off. My goal is to, is to tell you everything, to have you coming away being able to do anything I can do. Uh, it's to literally give away all the secrets. And so as we go through and look at things, how skating works, how a, how a scale works, how an air conditioner works, if I do demonstrations and stuff of, of these various activities of the machines themselves, the objects or the whatever, the, you know, and the air conditioner itself, and you come away not, re not really knowing what the heck did I just show you, then, then I failed. Then it was a bad demonstration. It's, it was a magic demonstration instead of a physics one. So I, I will try my best to, to, to give away all secrets and hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll collect as many as you can. So my, uh, to insert a, now a piece here that in, in what would otherwise be my normal story here, story is in past semesters, I have done the conventional lecture approach to the class. So I'll just sit up here and talk the whole time, and I'll show you PowerPoint slides, blah, 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 blah. And we'll go through, and the end of the class will come, you know, it'll come on 150, and that'll be that. Everybody else are shuffling their books, and we'll call it a day. And it's too passive. Um, part of learning physics is thinking through it yourself. Um, and uh, past students have discovered this in, in the context of doing problem set questions, or answer, basically answering questions on problem sets or on exams. You got to think yourself, whoa, that's a whole other experience than listening to me say it. So instead of doing the passive class, just, just talking away here, my intention for the first time after a zillion years is to flip the classroom, which means that I did indeed film the first lecture. Put it, on, put it on YouTube. Some of you have watched it, which is like Yahoo. Uh, or no, Wahoo, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, Yahoo is a, is a Google wannabe. Um, you, you guys missed that whole, the whole startup of, the, of the, uh, the search engines. Yahoo, Excite, you, haven't even, you don't even know the name. They're all fighting it out. Anyhow, OK, so those of you who watched the video, yeah, Wahoo. Um, but I hope that becomes a rhythm, that, that you'll watch the video. Here, the point of this is, is, if I just say it, just, just, just pour it out there, it's like a, it, you're listening to the same voice that wrote the damn textbook. I wrote the textbook, okay? I could read the textbook to you. I could talk the textbook to you in a, in a class, a lecture. There's only so much of that that, 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 that adds value. So, um, I put the lecture online. You can watch it at your leisure. You can watch it in double speed, whatever YouTube lets you do. You can just read the transcript. You can turn off the, you know, you can turn off the sound and watch me, <laughs> or, or vice versa, whatever you like. Um, I hope you do, do watch the videos. I'll try to keep them um, focused and, and, and uh, you know, as short as they need to be and try to get them right. I'm, I cannot. Uh, pour time and energy into producing them as television. 
I did that actually on Coursera. If you want to watch the first six topics um, uh, done really carefully, uh, five years ago, I guess, I, 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 po I, I have what, what used to be called a MOOC, M-O-O-C, Massive Online Open Course or Open Online Course. You can just sign up, it's free, just you can watch all these videos of me doing these first lectures. Um, doing, and I spent over 100 hours per hour of video uh, producing those things. It was a thousand hour project uh, in six classes. Okay, I can't do that uh, for this class. I can't do it for all the topics. It's, it's whew, another activity. So, bottom line is, I will try to keep going ahead with these, these videos. I hope you'll watch them from the book. And from the videos, you should get the basic content of the physics content, enough to, to be able to ask good questions or, or to, 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 to listen to discussion. And then I want to make classroom interactive. So um, after years of chasing, trying to chase away electronic widgets, uh, I, I'm, I'm doing a 180 and you know, turn this around 360 degrees. Um, the, you know, the Yogi Berra-isms that he might or might not have said. I'm going to turn around 180 and um, say, fine, you got a question? You're, you're uncomfortable asking it live and in person, which, I, which is an observation that I've, it has, there's been a drift toward that over the past 20 years. If you don't want to ask it live in person, text it to me. I, it's not my cell phone, it's, it's an online text. It'll show up here, and that's the text number. So don't, you know, don't, don't text me questions that are really off topic or not of general interest or, yeah, it's funny to ask that. Yeah, like, you, can, can we make him laugh? Yeah, anything can make me laugh. So, you know, it's no, it's, the bar's really low. Um, but, but if you've got a question about the, about the, that's relevant to this stuff, ask it, okay? Uh, if you can ask it live and in person, that's better. I mean, it's, it's just more, uh, I work better that way. Um, and I hope we'll get lots of, lots of discussion and, and, and illustrations of, of, of what we're doing and the physics that, that's involved and all that stuff. At this point, live in person, any questions about, about that whole idea? The, 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 the post a lecture online, use the class to flesh out everything else. We can talk about anything. Okay. I'll try to keep an eyeball on it. I'm not, I am, I am a rare digital native of my generation, but I'm not a social media person. So I, I, can, you know, I, I know how the gadgets work, but I don't use, I'm not much of a user, all right? So if I forget, like for example, to, to watch the watch for text coming in, nudge me. Okay, so uh, the goals and expectations for the class. Um, I hope that you'll develop some real understanding of the world around you. How, how a lot of, of significant things uh, work. Things that matter to you and that will matter to you maybe right now, maybe uh, 10 years from now. You, you might well care when you're buying a house. Some of these things we'll talk about directly affect the behaviors of houses. Hot and cold, uh, the windows, the, um, the plumbing. We're going to go all over that kind of stuff. Um, ho hopefully you'll come out with some appreciation of, of physics' place in the world, that, it, that it's not just an academic activity, something that just lives in, in some laboratory somewhere and, and just never leaves. It's completely arcane. Um, it, it, it's not. It has, uh, it, it's quite relevant when you know, certain parts of physics are quite relevant. Uh, come to understand that the universe is predictable in many respects. There, there are certain degrees which it's not predictable, which are interesting in themselves. But you can, uh, you know, it was the definition of crazy is to do things twice and expect a different outcome the second time. It's, you know, physics, you actually can predict. You, you, you crash this into that, that's what happens. Uh, it's going to happen every time, and you don't have to, have to do it to, to know it's going to happen. Um, we, we will not be crashing cars into each other all day. Let's see what else. Um, focus on the concepts. This is not a formulaic class. We do very little math or algebra. And for some of you, you'll go like, oh, wow, what a relief. In reality, though, if you think back to days, if you, those of you who have taken physics before, a lot of people just grab onto those formulas. You know, give me an F, give me an M, I can give you an A. <laughs> they can just plug and chug out and get 
uh, high scores on some assessments, but they don't really understand anything. So, so it's good news, bad news. And the good news is we're really not going to focus much on the formulas, with a couple of exceptions. And the bad news is we're not going to focus on the formulas. So they are not crutches or you know, things, tools that you can just use without having to think. This is actually a class in thinking. And if I keep my focus on, you know, as I, as I do the, the new version of the class, I will try to, to very you know, deliberately put in as much problem solving as I can. Because if you come out of here, this institution, in fact, you know, one, of the, one of the things most valuable that, that, that it can teach, that, that higher education can teach, is how to solve problems. Analytical thinking, logic, really, you know, it, 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 go on and be a lawyer, you're going to be using that. You know, go on to be a, you know, almost every job you can, I, you can think of. Uh, you're going to be solving problems, and if, that, if you, if all, just, you know, plugging and chugging will eventually be completely automated anyway. So, so learning to think, practicing thinking. Uh, it has been my observation, some people have great difficulty thinking because they've never been forced to do it. I mean, okay, the thinking, what, what's the definition? Thinking, uh, we'll see, but, but, but seriously solving a problem uh, that, that, that no one's done before, for example, is you've got to really put, put the pieces together and come out with an answer. That is a huge challenge for, for, for some, some people, some of you, and hopefully we'll make progress toward that, okay? And it, if you forget everything you ever learned about physics, it's okay, as long as you can solve problems. The problems that I, my kids growing up, these, they're, they're these classic sort of problems like how many uh, uh, car tires end up in landfill or, or are basically are discarded in the United States every year. And you might think offhand that, that how could anybody possibly answer that without, any, without lots of information? The answer is you can, you can figure it out. You, you can come pretty close. And you can do that with a whole lot of things. If you, just, if you, if, if you get pr some practice just thinking through problems, pulling out information that you already know or that you can make a very good guess on. You can solve lots of problems. Okay, <sighs> what else? Um, I assume no prior study of physics. So some of you will have taken physics, and I'll ask that in a second, and some of you will not, and in the most cases it won't make a lot of difference. So, you, so those of you who have never taken physics and you feel you're, you're, you're afraid, you're way behind, no, don't worry. It, it, is it, when the dust settles, it's, there's not a big correlation between past experience. Uh, I will now ask a question, and this is also a work in progress. For years I used, for years I, I didn't have any way of mechanism for asking questions and having you respond other than raising hands. And then for a, 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 a number of years, I used what are called iClickers, these little student response gadgets. And how many of you have an iClicker? Lots of you, good, okay. Um, I, I use them and I, and I assign some credit to, to clicking. I thought that was great. You know, people were there clicking away, so whatever. And then, it's a, it's a long story, but the story ends with me putting a GoPro camera in one of those little openings in the back of the room, filming forward to see what was going on in the back of the room. And there were lots of people sitting around waiting for me to ask a question that, that for which they could click with either one clicker or several clickers because they had their friends' clickers with them. And while they were waiting, they were either talking or watching movies or you know shopping on, on Amazon or Pinterest, whatever, you know, the whole set. So, um, long story short then, not, you know, not short enough, is I, I stopped giving credit for, for the eye clickers because I don't want to drag you here. If you don't want to be here, don't come. But if you want to be here, great. And I, by not assigning credit to the eye clicker stuff, I risk having some of you not obtain one because they cost money or the code costs money. It's, it is what it is. So the fact that you already, a bunch of you have it, that's so great. Okay, so I will ask clicker questions. I'm not really ready to do it yet um, because, yeah, I'm not really ready to do it yet. But we'll, we'll go there starting next time. And this would be a clicker question. And I've always had a battle with the lighting in this room. It's been, it's, that is the wrong choice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, there's, <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> 21st century, and it takes 
10 seconds for the computer to figure out, oh, Moscow, can we, can we turn on the lights? Yeah. Um, the story in Moscow, what that reminds me is that I, I also videotape, now, in addition to videotaping the lectures and putting them up there on YouTube, the, the, the off, I videotape the classroom too. I've always, I've done that for, for 20 years and post it online and the people in Moscow were watching the videos for its long story for that one too and they were especially uh, noticed people putting their shoes, their feet on the on bench here because so, they could see, if you, if you look here, see the, see the bench there, they would see feet coming up. <laughs> and they were like, people in the United States put their shoes on the professor's desk? Okay. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'll try to rein in my enthusiasm here. Um, so, the, que the question, once I get clickers going, we'll, we'll do it better, but, but I'll do it the old-fashioned way with, with voting. Your background's in physics, and this is partly for your own edification. What fraction of you around you are, have this experience? How many have, have never taken physics before? Okay, so 10%. Um, how, uh, how about uh, s some background in physics, but, but not, a, not a formal class? You know, so a little bit coming up, a little bit above it. It's a few more percent. How about a, a year of physics? Okay, see the vast majority of you will have taken a, a year of physics. And how about two years of physics? Okay, uh, we're down to about another 10, 15% maybe. And then Hawking's protege, there you go. It's more, that's, that's more fun when we do clickers because then you can hide and you can actually, and you can change your, you can change your choice on the fly. Okay, the, the next question, not altogether unrelated, is, is uh, distinguishing t three pairs of physical quantities. And we'll, I'll, I'll, you know, physical, what are physical quantities? I'll, I'll do a little bit of story of that today. Um, I'm not going to be, I'm not expecting many of you to have watched the first lecture video, so I will rehash some things today. But, but going forward, I will hope to, hope to assume that you know some of this stuff. Okay, but, but how many of you uh, can distinguish velocity from acceleration, mass, I won't ask that one specifically, mass from weight, force from momentum? Got, got the idea? How many think, uh, well, let's start with A, which is huh, no way. Okay, nobody wants, that, that, that's a case that's better with clickers because nobody really wants to, to, to fess up. Um, I have a faint sense of their differences. Okay, so you know, 10%, 5, 10%. Um, I might be able to distinguish each pair. You know, another 5%-ish. Um, I can probably distinguish each pair. Okay, so we're now we're probably at 30 or so percent. How about I definitely can distinguish each pair? 10, 10 15%. I don't think that's summed to 100%. <laughs> but it's okay, you know, it's a... It's a primary. Um, all right. Which one do I want? Oh, I think that's what I want. All right. Okay, so the, the long and short of that study then is that uh, many of you have taken physics before and have so, some feel for what you can, you can, you can work with. And if, if that is genuine, that you, that you, that you, you can distinguish those physical quantities, uh, the next week or two will be, will be semi-easy peasy. If not, it'll be work, you gotta think. Um, and when we come out the end in a couple of weeks, uh, everybody ought to be able to answer that question. I can definitely distinguish each pair. And moreover, that's a, that's a sort of a physics-y question that you can actually see them in real life, you know, wh what role they play in the world. So, which is, which is by far my, the most important part of the whole story here is that if you can't apply this stuff, it doesn't fit in your world, again, I failed. So we, 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 ha we haven't done, you know, it's, it takes two to do that, to, to fail, but, but uh, I haven't helped. All right, so some things to do. I put out a paper version of the syllabus there. Please get one, look at it. The real syllabus lives on, online on, on my own web server. I, I, I don't use Colab. It, it just doesn't have the functionality that I'm looking for. Uh, it does link you to my website if you go to the collabs. And in particular, the old exams, I post old exams going back, 
I, I think if you look around hard, you can find them going back to 1995. Um, you will see that I reuse questions and all sorts of stuff, or some of my questions weren't so great back in 1995. Teaching, I actually learned stuff from this class, believe it or not. You know, um, I didn't know everything then. I, now, of course, I know everything. Um, but you can find all those old exams. But my point is that, that I don't make those available across the whole world. If you, if you try to go into the old exams and a few other parts, it will ask you for a, for a username and a password. You have to, to re-enter the site. Ah, from on grounds, you can get into them easy. From off grounds, it will say, no, 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 you have to use the password protected version. You can do that. And the password, the username and password are, and I'll turn off the sound. So if you can go to Colab, you can find those. So that'll happen. Somebody, will be, you'll be studying for an exam off grounds, and you'll go, oh my gosh, how do I see those exams? OK? Any questions at this point? All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Do we have quicker questions for credit? Yes, my first one. Or are they just for our benefit? They're just for your benefit. Again, the, the, the credit problem, if I, if I do them for credit, I will drag you here. And, and, and that's not a good reason. So I don't do them for credit, but you learn from them. The, the act of trying to find the right answer, the thinking involved, and if I, I try to have you guys talk among yourselves and just, to, to, to pick, a, pick an answer, you know, it's, it's not cheating, it's discussion, it's like, it's point. That's the value. So it's, it, yeah, it's, it is for your own benefit, and the benefit is real, right? It's not the benefit that, that People told you, oh, yes, you know, eat your broccoli. It's for your benefit. That was real, too, but OK, you get the point. Um, so look at the syllabus. The schedule itself will evolve because in the new, trying to use the flipped classroom, I'm not sure when we'll get to each topic, how fast we'll go through the material. Um, it partially depends on, how, on the discussion in class, where, where we go in class. Um, we can, we, in, in my tendency to get off on, Tangents. Okay, so um, that will evolve, but otherwise the the the, the syllabus is pretty well de defined. Um, the, the the work that will be graded consists of ten problem sets. Um, occasionally, well, no, I'm ten is the goal. Once in a while, I lose a problem set. Not, not literally lose it, but we just run, the time gets awkward, and and I I throw it away. Uh, it, it should be ten. The, the dates for them at this point are, are on that paper syllabus and on the online. Keep track of them. I will try to remind you all that when they're due, but don't count on it. They're typically due on a Wednesday, sort of rhythmically, every Wednesday that, where there's not an exam. Um, and there are two midterm exams and a final exam. The midterm exams are 30 multiple choice questions, and the final is 60 multiple choice questions. And you can look at old examples on the web going back forever. All right? Uh, because the content of the course evolves and changes a little bit, um, the exams might not be perfectly relevant, the old ones to, the, to, to now, but they're pretty, they're pretty close. All right? So some final suggestions before getting into material. Uh, please do ask questions live. Online, oh, we're getting, hey, hey, hey. So this is, this will be work. How important are the readings for the classes? And, and could watching the videos take the place? They're, they may be equivalent. You will have to judge for yourself. The reading, I, I, I'd probably say very little in the video that isn't in the reading. And the reading is probably the most comprehensive because it, it's, I have so much time, in effect, to polish the writing, the, 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 the words in the book. Uh, the video is, I do it on the fly, it's, it's, it's necessarily imperfect. Um, but you'll find one, the, one of them that you, the, that's mo most valuable to you. Uh, you may want both of them. Um, you may be able to skim either, whatever. It's, it, you, you, you can figure it out. Is that is it okay? Yeah. For the problem sets, when do they become available to the children? When the problem sets, when do they become available? Um, 
I'll try to make them as early as possible, 10 days in advance. I may be able to do better because I've collected a lot of problem sets and questions. I've actually put the first problem set up there already. So you can go and stare at it. Um, I, I'm using my own uh, homework site. So, so I'm, I'm the administrator and the, you know, the whole works. Once in a while I mess up on the configuration, so I think I got it right this time again. You should get, you, you can look at it, you can come back as many times as you like. When you, when you submit an answer, you can submit the answers uh, asynchronously, one at a time. And there, it's, a ten, it's 10 questions. Um, when you submit it, it'll tell you right or wrong, and if you get it wrong, it gives you a hint, and then you can go back and try it one more time. I give you two tries with a hint. The second try, you get half credit. Did I do that? I think I did do that, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. You get this, if you get the second, if you get it right on the second try, you get half credit. Yeah, and that, there's a limit to sort of how much, I, the, the clickers, like no credit, you know, right? It's, I can't do everything for no credit. That puts too much weight on the, um, on the exams, and furthermore, there, it, it's good to have some incentive to, to think carefully about the problem sets. So I, you know, I dock you one for, for get it wrong the first time. And the problem sets are not pledged work. Go ahead and talk about them among yourselves. Uh, don't just answer them for each other. That's because that that's, that's shooting yourself in the foot, because then you won't learn the stuff, and you'll get creamed on the exam. T discuss the problem sets with your, among yourselves or with me. That's why I have office hours. So I have, hold office hours Monday afternoon in Alderman li uh, Cafe Library. That, the, entr the, answer to, <laughs> the entrance to Alderman Library is, is a cafe, and I'll hang out there from 3 to 5, happy to discuss problem set questions. Monday, uh, sorry, Wednesday morning, 9 to 11, I'll be in my office downstairs. Same thing, talk about questions. During class, I don't know that I want to talk about pending problem set questions, but if you've got questions on the problem sets that already have gone, like, like why, was it, why was it momentum? Okay, I'll bring it up as a question. We can talk about pro past problem set questions in class. Other questions? Um, is, is not having class on September 19th, is that, is that for sure? Yes, there will not be class on September 19th. It's a Jewish holiday, okay? And I, the actual questions, I'll try to have them every day. I'll probably try to have a, a bunch of them. They are very hard to write good ones. Um, I, may, I may have sources for them, but the sources typically are, are, are physics people questions, not mine. Yeah. Oh, it, 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 on, on the syllabus, every Friday is bl blank on topic. That's, that's a coincidence. What, what the, the, the current schedule uh, is stolen from last year. And that that's a, sort, of, sort of the rhythm that I, that I managed to do, because I kept fixing it as we kept going along. I would get behind, I would get ahead, rarely. And, and so this is an artifact of last year. The actual timing of when we start new topics is a work in progress. So, but every day we can talk about any topic and pretty much anything. I will, we, we should probably try to focus on the, on the material relevant to the current topic. Is that okay? I don't want to make, make the class completely loosey-goosey at the live one, but, but to try to make it uh, flesh out the topic at hand is, seems like a valuable thing to do. And, and, and the fact that you guys are asking questions already by both, mecha, by both mechanisms is it's like, whoo hoo. Again, I'm okay, I'm, I, I need to find new uh, expressions of enthusiasm here. Other, yeah. Can you submit um, questions to the problem set on like different days? Can you submit answers to problem sets on different days? Absolutely. You can just keep picking away at them. And sometimes the, the, the questions, are, they're stories. Almost all my problem sets are, are a case study. You're, so, so the first one is it's the story of, of, es of escalators in a, in a, in a four-story building. And so the questions build on each other. So if you get one wrong, I mean, don't jump to question 10. And in fact, we may not have covered the material for question 10 until a couple of days down the road. But very early on, you can get question one, okay? So, so pick them off. Actually, the other thing is, is to get the, get, the, get the questions, print them out. Just, just save them with you. Um, and you can sort of start noticing, oh, that's, 
we just talked about the right, this topic, basically. Here it is, okay? Yeah? I you gotta do it online, because I, I just can't handle the paper. Years ago, we did it all paper. Oh my gosh, I used to have 10 graders. Actually, I used to have, this class got as large as 520 in multiple rooms. It was, a, it was long stories. Other questions? Yeah. How long should you expect the problem sets to take? Um, if you really start, get to know the material and, and, and you look at it, you, you can pick them off, then it's, it's, it's tens of, you know, 10 minutes. But it's like, yeah. but there, look at them and you'll go, some of the questions you may be able to answer easily once we, you know, maybe even now you can answer them already. But okay, but, but it, uh, people will often spend more like an hour, two hours on them. It, there, there's no cal very, very few calculations. So, so the, historically, the, the, the problem sets that physics majors and stuff suffer over often like, you know, it's a triple integral on how you're going to do this one. You're like, you spend a month on it. Um, none of that. Okay. They are a little, they take a little longer than doing an, um, an exam question. The exam questions either know me, don't know me. Basically, you can either solve me right now or, or not. These, the problem set questions, I, I'm more, they can be a little bit more, boy, I, I should go read about that and think about it a bit more. All right. Thank you again for, for asking questions. I, look, the, cl the class, the point of the, point of class is to have you guys learn this stuff and to learn how to think and all these things associated with that. And so the more that, the, that we get talking on it and, and uh, working through it, the better. I know the stuff. I don't need to sit up here and just talk it all, talk it, talk it at you. So I, so I appreciate the, the involvement and keep it up, come to my office hours, that's what I, you know, that's why I hold them, I'm not there just like to fill a requirement of some administrator. All right, other last bits here. Um, try the demonstrations yourself. Alas, in, in, in the past years, I've had this class room reserved after class, so there was a big open period and we can muck around with the, with the stuff. Uh, they've got a chemistry class coming in here promptly at two. So we can't do that so much. Um, to the extent that it's possible, try the demonstrations yourself. I will try to encourage some of you to come do the demonstrations yourself in class. Uh, I, you know, I know how they work, but what's the point? Um, they're more fun, actually, if you get to watch your friends do them. And I try not to embarrass anybody doing them. Once in a while, you know, it's, we, have, we can chuckle at each other. I, I don't mean to make fun at somebody. If I do, and I irritate somebody, let me know. I don't mean to do that. Um, the wait list, if anybody's on the wait list, at this point, it's, it's pretty clear to me that it will work out. Some of you will, will promptly leave class. Some of you who are not here already, have already left. Um, there, it's not gonna be a problem. Everybody who wants to be in this class this semester will get in. Um, you, can, you can hold me to that, it'll work. Um, if, you know, so if two, if two weeks down and they, some space hasn't opened up, you're stuck somehow on the waiting list, we can fix it. Don't go past the ad deadline, though. That's, that's real hard. Um, do, okay. Before class, certainly you can come in. The room really is available the, the, the hour before. So come on in. Um, there's also back doors that you, can, that you can come and go from also. All right. So that's... Introduction to class. And so now the topic, the first topic, so again, it's case study physics basically. Look at the, the world of physics in the context of, of, of an object or an activity. The activity is skating. And whether it's literally skates, okay, you know, you can get anything on eBay. Um, if it's literally skates, it could be a skateboard. The you know, Razor scooter is about more my speed because everything else, I'll get killed. Bad, razor scooter is pretty much bad enough. And with the idea that, that, that having, the, having the lecture online, I'll talk the story out uh, online with maybe a couple of demonstrations, but I want to spend some part of, of each topical in class period illustrating the story. So the story is this for skating. Um, the, the physics is recounted in the book, in the video. The story is this. That, that if you're skating or on a, a skate-like system, you make the observation that if you're at rest, apart from teetering, I should get one of those, the, the little kid's scooters that has three wheels. For good reason, we'll talk about tricycles and bicycles down the road. 
Um, so when you're arrested, you tend to stay to rest. You have noticed all your life that somebody who's just sort of standing there on a roller skates or skateboard doesn't abruptly head off to the right at 400 miles an hour. It has never happened, certainly not without the inter intervention of something. If they get hit by a fighter jet, they're going to go ahead. It, it, that wouldn't happen. But, but setting, setting out that, 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 in, that external influence, an object that's at rest tends to stay that way. In order to change, to not be at rest for a skater, something's got to push on them. They can get pushed forward, and you might wonder who pushed me. It was actually the floor. I, I, I cheated. I put my foot down and let the floor push me. Um, so starting and stopping and turning all involve something pushing on me, at me the skater. But if I don't have those pushes and I'm at rest, I stay that way. Just an observation. Um, not, not an arbitrary one. And the other sort of category of observations is, is that if you are actually moving, you tend to keep doing it, right? So now, so I am moving, I tend to keep on moving until something again bugs me. So it's just much of the time a skater, a skateboarder, um, ice, roller skates, whatever, they tend to be moving the same as now, as now, as now, as now. The, the, the motion is, is uh, their motion doesn't change. And behind that, ob that observation is a physics concept, inertia. And inertia makes two observations. I'll make both of the observations, and then I'll illustrate them a bunch of ways. The, the, the it, inertia is not is it a concept? I guess it's a, it's a concept. Um, it's, not a, it's not a physical quantity. It's, it's, the, it's a con conceptual observation that in our universe, the things that are left to themselves continue moving as they were. That is, if they weren't moving at all, which is a, a special case of, of motion that, that physicists call being at rest. And it's such jargon, like it, it, it trips out of my tongue so easily, I, I recognize it's jargon, but it is. I'm an object at rest, okay? And an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object that's in motion tends to continue in motion. It's just the way things are. And it's, it's, it, you've heard it said a zillion times probably, and it's easy to misunderstand because that you can say it, but to believe it is something else. So illustrating it, so let me illustrate it a bunch of ways. And the traditional first way of illustrating it my first, my first demonstration every semester usually works. E added degree of difficulty. <sighs> Used to be real wine way long back, you know, before the liquor laws and all that. And then furthermore, um, it's easy to wear the wine. So it's disappearing ink. So here's the idea. The place settings. Again, not magic at all. Zero magic, right? Harry Potter, sorry. So, these objects are at rest. It is their nature to stay at rest. And this is an unbreakable plate. You can try it. You can quietly come try it. You, this one you can't break. There were years ago, somebody broke one. Okay, right. Anyhow, the point is to go as fast as possible. Why? Because it's a slick silk cloth. And the point is not to bother these. I, I, they want to be inertial, to, to move as inertia had in mind. But if I bug them, that will, I will, that will spoil it. So this will bug them as little as possible. And time is important here. The shorter I bug them, the less I push. And the shorter I push, the less it affects them. So I, so I choke up. I, come, I, go out, I go out far, come in, and then I pull a little down. Obviously not up. Ready? Get set. <laughs> so. Not magic, you okay with that idea? You know why they stayed in place? Right? Inertia. Other examples of inertia. Yeah. Another example. I'll ask, I could ask and I won't. A question about rotary lawnmowers. Rotary lawnmowers that have a spinning blade business? Whoosh. And the question I would ask, 
what time prevents, is can you cut the grass using a spinning blade if the grass is not attached to the ground? No roots. You got the idea? And if I had you vote, the vast majority of you would vote no. You'd say, no, you need the roots. You okay with that? I'm just abbreviating my story here. This is going to be grass-like, but it's an apple, of course. I'm going to put the apple there, and years ago I used to swing the blade through it like that, and the whole front row would duck. So now I have a spring-loaded widget. Ha ha! Ready? So the apple's just sitting there, and a blade going very fast is going to cut right through it. Why did the apple stay in place? Inertia. It's its nature. Then blade barely bothered it except to slice it in half. But, but that is its nature to be, to be cut. And so the, the cutting the grass problem, so next time somebody wonder, you know, asks you how a lawnmower works, and is it important to sharpen the blade of the lawnmower, and the answer is yes, because you want to sneak it through the grass before the grass even no notices it's there. The grass just sits there because of inertia. Ready? And you can just slice it. It's just, it's just there minding its own business inertially. And you cut it up. So inertia is, dominates the motion of skaters. Once the skater is going, they keep moving, not because something's pushing them, but because nothing's pushing them. They're, they're coasting. Uh, an object is moving according to inertia can be said to be, the physicists would say they're, they're inertial. A ordinary person would say they're coasting. That's what coasting means. It means moving as inertia had in mind. And that's a large part of skating. Do I want to show you any other things about inertia before I stop? I, yeah, I will. I'll show you some. This class is supposed to be useful. So um, this is, that was an object at rest, staying at rest. Here's going to be an object in motion, continuing in motion. Banana. This is not useful yet, right? I mean, unless you're really weird. Um, this banana, I'm going to get the banana moving. And it is going to commit suicide here. Ready? Nah, just a flesh wound. <laughs> I mean, my aim is so bad. There we go, OK? It, it cut itself. It was moving, and it has to continue moving. It just happened to encounter a blade and become two. So where, is that, where are these things useful? <sighs> Too many demonstrations. I want to show you one that, that, that you better be using the rest of your life. Is, you know, you're down to the last bit of ketchup. How do you get to the ketchup to come out? You, know, you turn it upside down. OK, this is loose ketchup. I got lucky. <laughs> All right, got to, not, not thick enough. It, it's a brand name. Okay. But, but you know, if you're really down to the last little bit, it's really hard to get to the tip. What do you do? Use inertia. Get the ketchup moving with the container, and then stop it. You know, to stop, the, stop the container. The ketchup slams, over, slams to the far end. Do you do, you do this with, with your, tube of, of, your precious tube of, of magic lotion that makes you look years younger or years older? I mean, it depends on what your age is. You know, you get it moving. Get the lotion moving, and then stop it. Stop the container. The lotion keeps moving and goes to the, to the end. Last crucial one that I know you deal with. You know, your socks come out of the laundry looking like this. How do you get the socks to, to pull straight? Get the whole thing moving and then stop the toe. Right. Do you, you use this, right? That, it's an inertia game, OK? I'll stop. And I'll see you guys on Friday.